Welcome to week two of our online Bible study featuring my friend and uh, I guess you could almost say leadership mentor. Oh, thank you. And uh, fellow ministry uh, partner sometimes, Pastor Craig Groeschel. Thanks, Not Lisa. only you're an amazing pastor, leader, friend, but also you guys know the author of Dangerous Prayers and I'm so grateful to have you. Thank you. I'm honored to be with you, Lisa. Yeah, well, thank you so much. So we're going to jump right in to week two. And this week we're reading all about the dangerous prayer, Search Me. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, as I was reading through this book, there were certain lines that grabbed a hold of my heart. And this week too, the line that I read uh, really shook me. And it's almost like I can't not think about it. And so I've decided every time I think about the word search me or this quote that I'm about to read, um, I've turned it into a prayer because I struggle with fear mm. and I struggle especially with um, uncertainty mm -hmm. and uh, some, I guess some things that I've been through in the past have let me uh, no longer believe like, it'll be fine. It'll be mm -hmm. okay. It's like, well, no, sometimes it's not fine. Right. And sometimes it's not okay. But the quote I want to bring out, you mentioned this on page 40. Sometimes what we fear the most reveals where we trust God the least. Mm -hmm. And what we say uh, when I'm studying with some of my friends at work, uh, we'll sometimes read a line like that and we'll just sit back and say, roasted. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah. what we fear the most sometimes reveals where we trust God the least. Right. Yeah, it's not fun, but it, the reality is a lot of us deal with anxiety. We're afraid. I can imagine that some of you right now are facing something with a child, maybe, maybe a marriage challenge. I know a lot of people have real financial fears. It could be uh, some kind of a health issue, any number of different things. And I think if you take a look at that thing that's gripped you with fear and you're really honest, that's probably an area that you haven't submitted to God. Mm -hmm. And it's an indi indicator perhaps of a place that we need to grow in our trust and our faith. And it's no fun to really admit that, but you might just think about right now, what is it that keeps me awake? What is it that I'm worried about? What is it that triggers that anxious feeling? And then ask yourself, maybe, is that an area that I haven't surrendered to God? Is it something I'm trying to control? And because what you fear the most does often reveal a place where you're trusting mm -hmm. God the least. Well, and I think for me, sometimes when I read the word search me mm -hmm. or God revealed to me, it, it almost feels scary because it could feel like it's almost equivalent to God exposed me. Of course it does, yeah. And so, um, and I don't want to be exposed. I don't want my vulnerabilities to, um, to be so front and center. And I don't want attention to be drawn there. But I think as I read this part of Dangerous Prayers, um, what I really picked up from you is it, it's not the equivalent of expose me. Mm -hmm. It's God search me so you can help me. Yes. God search me so you can reveal a place where your comforting touch, your merciful revelations mm -hmm. need to be revealed to me, not as an act of cruelty, but as mm -hmm. an act of great mercy by God. Right. We're not, we're not asking an, an angry critic to point out what's wrong with the, in us. We're, we're asking a loving father who wants to conform us to the image of his son to, to help do that very thing. And I think, you, you know, you're, you've been so graciously public about what you've been through in the last mm -hmm. few years, and it's a message that's given so many people hope and inspired them to press on mm -hmm. when they would rather give up. And your life is in many ways a reflection of kind of dangerous prayers. Mm -hmm. And it's not just I'm pointing my fingers at what someone else is doing or not, but God, what do you want to do in me? Mm -hmm. And if it takes, if, if you have to search me to show me where I need to trust you more, then do it. If you need to break me to get me to a place of total dependence on you, That's right. <laughs> do that. And um, it is, it's incredibly scary mm -hmm. to, to say you know, anything. Show me, reveal the sin in me. Is there arrogance? Is there pride? Am I narcissistic? Am I unnecessarily critical? Am I battling? Have I rationalized a sin that is really breaking your heart and keeping me from intimacy with someone else? Search me. Uh, and if you're, if you're afraid to pray that, 
you know, what we fear the most may reveal what we trust the least. Yeah. It's, a, it's a dangerous prayer, but it, it is to a loving God who really, really cares about you. Mm -hmm. And what he shows you isn't to, with a condemning finger, but with a loving lift of, let me help you become more of who I want you to be. Well, and it's kind of interesting what you said, like when we pray that kind of prayer, search me, um, our view of God very much determines the level to which we would be able That's to good. pray a prayer mm -hmm. like that. Right. So if our view of God that's been shaped by perceptions and beliefs that are formed in us, if we do see God as a condemning critic with his finger pointed at mm -hmm. us, ready to, to expose us to the world, then praying a prayer like this is going to feel dangerous in the fear side of dangerous. But if we do view God as a loving God, as one who is for us, not against us, mm -hmm. as one who is continuing to create us and shape us and mold us into what we would want to be if we could only see God's vision of us. Yes. Then if that's our view and our perception of God, dangerous doesn't mean scary. Dangerous mm -hmm. means the most exciting opportunity yes. to connect with the depths of who God is and who he created us to be. Yeah. I so wrote good. recently, um, a, a study called Trustworthy. And in there I put, um, if I'm honest, there are many times where I would rather tame God than trust God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would rather gather up all the things about my life and make my plan, my vision for the th way things should be. And even most tempting for me, I want my outcome. Like I wanna take what I assume a good God should do in the outcome of all of my situations and I want to tame God to the point where I say, bless this, my plan. Don't mess with this, God. Just bless it. And what I'm starting to understand is when I do that, that is the exact opposite of surrender. Mm -hmm. And that's where we get caught in that trap of control and that kind of trying to control something that ultimately we know we cannot control. Mm -hmm. That's really what I think is, is feeding so much of our anxiety, our depression, um, our frustration, our disappointments yes. with life. And so I really think ultimately when we back this week all the way up, am I willing to fully and truly and authentically surrender the way I think things should be mm -hmm. and trade it for what God sees as best. But I'm only able to do that if I view him as a loving yes. father mm -hmm. who has my best interest in mind. Yes. Yeah, tragically, I think that so many people don't view God that way. And so everything is, you know, he's out to get me or he doesn't really care or he's not mm. listening to this, my prayer or whatever. And so I just, I really, really do pray that if you maybe were raised in a way that you've got um, a distorted view of God, that instead, Lisa, that, that you know, read her books, <laughs> you know, let, let, <laughs> let, let God renew your mind that, you, that he is a good God. He cares about you. He cares about the intimate details of what you're going through. And ultimately, what we want for ourselves, although it may feel comfortable, it may feel clean, that on, on the other side of some difficult prayers, on, um, on the other side of faith, is his goodness. Mm -hmm. Even if we find ourselves mourning or broken, he, he meets us in those moments. He comforts us. I, and I like what you said, too, about the dangerous part. Sometimes the most fun things in life are kind of dangerously thrilling. Yes. You know, you're on a ride with your kids mm. on the rapids and like, that was cr crazy, scary, fun. And I think that's really what a life of faith is like. Whereas, okay, I need you now. And okay, you just came through for me now. And I didn't know what was going to happen. And then you revealed your goodness. And then I thought we hit a dead end. And then you opened up a door and it was kind of a dangerous faith ride. But yeah, on the backside, we, like, we could see your goodness the whole way with us, God. I think sometimes we get glimpses of the goodness of God in situations here on earth. So we get glimpses of God, the sunrise and the sunset. You mm -hmm. know, we get glimpses of God when we hear an amazing message at church and there's something in our heart that we're just like, oh, you know, and then we get glimpses of God when uh, maybe we view something in nature. So I'm a mountain mm -hmm. girl. I know a lot of you are beach people, mm -hmm. but I love the mountains. And sometimes when I get up early in the morning and I'm looking across at the mountains and the way they almost kiss the clouds, it's just, I have this moment where I'm like, oh, 
And I was trying to explain to my kids recently, it's in those moments where we get such a revelation, I think, of what we're working toward one day when we get to heaven. Mm. And I think we would be more willing to pray dangerous prayers if we had a right view of where God really is taking us. Mm. He's not taking us one day to this eternity where we're gonna float around in clouds and play the right. harp and everything. It's gonna be an endless awe and wonder of everything we see. It's gonna be like an eternity of that feeling. Mm -hmm. And so I agree with you, sometimes it can feel scary to stand on the heights and look at a mountain, but we press through because yeah. of the on the other side. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think dangerous prayers is gonna really create for people, mm -hmm. an opportunity to press through the resistance of praying something that at first seems quite scary, mm -hmm. search me. I hope so, and I hope that it also breaks people out of, sometimes, you know, I talk to people all the time and say, I don't know how to pray, I get bored praying, I feel like my prayers are hitting a ceiling. And so I hope it, it just infuses people with this um, just kind of raw faith and transparency before mm -hmm. God. That I'm not just praying, you know, the normal everyday keep me safe type prayers, but it's a, kind of a gut wrenching, maybe I'm hurting, maybe I'm angry, maybe I am afraid, but here goes, okay, search me. Mm -hmm. You know, God, and, and so hopefully it will really create a sense of intimacy and depth and dimension in our relationship with God. That's amazing. Well, Pastor Craig, thank you for being brave enough to write a book that we all need, Dangerous thank Prayers. You. Thank you for leading us to the place where we feel permission to break outside of maybe what for some of us has been very rote prayers, but to expand our view of what we can and should and mm -hmm. ought to pray. And um, thank you for being willing to go first. Mm -hmm. I know that you don't write a message like this without asking God to search you and then hard right. things being revealed. Yes. But on the other side of that, what would you say as we wrap up today that you've prayed, search me, God did reveal something hard, but over time, the blessing that came from that? Well, I think any time, you know, in, even in my life right now, God is showing me stuff that He's trying to cleanse from me. It's incredibly painful. Um, it's, inc it's, I, it's, it's embarrassing. Like, how would someone like me who's been walked with God and supposed to be a public spiritual figure mm. still be dealing with something that seems so simple? Uh, but on the other hand, it's, it's, I wake up with a sense of God's doing a new thing in me, mm -hmm. and it's not an easy thing. And I mean, even to the point where in front of three people just trying to talk about something, I just couldn't keep back the tears a couple days ago. Mm. And this just raw, emotional, gut-wrenching, self-examining, God do something in me type of place. And so I would just say that, you know, have faith that God can do something like that in you, that it can be, it can be fresh, it can be real. And the most intimate moments, the most faith-building moments for me are not the big victorious, you know, that's exactly what I wanted moments. It's in the, no, there's something in you that needs to be cleansed, mm -hmm. or there's something in you that needs to be broken, or I have something more for you on the other side of this if you'll just get out of your comfort zone, step over your fears, and put all your trust in me. Mm. And all that feels dangerous to me, but on the other side of a very unusual path that we often wouldn't choose and wouldn't want, it's the place going, okay, that's why you took us this way because you couldn't have gotten us t to this place in any other way. Mm. And I love your vulnerability and your tenderness as you approach this um, because hard hearts break, but soft hearts get molded. Mm, good. And I think if we're tired of having our heart broken mm -hmm. by circumstances, mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's time to shift that That's really good. and ask the Lord to search us so He can keep our hearts soft. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we'll have our heart broken by the circumstances of life nearly as much mm -hmm. if our heart is sold enough, uh, soft enough mm -hmm. to just be molded good. by God. Good. So thank you. So All helpful. right, and yeah. you know how we close oh, yes. every week. Hey, you you might even know it better than me, right? Hey, listen to me. <laughs> if you know the truth <laughs> and if you live the truth, it that changes, changes everything. everything. All right. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs>